Good afternoon. It's Thursday, the 5th of October, 2017, just after one o'clock. Welcome to UK Column News. I'm your host, Brian Gerrish, with me in studio, Mike Robinson. Well, it's an extraordinary day, uh, Mike. We have uh, Mike Veal, the Chief Constable of Wiltshire Police. The report is out and we're going to come on to that in a moment. But let's start at the top of the tree with our illustrious leader, it was just a road accident, uh, as many people in the chat box commenting. Uh, Theresa May's speech at the Tory party conference yesterday, I wasn't going to even mention it. Uh, but then uh, Sky News this morning pushed out a little piece of video, uh, and uh, uh, it's just incredible. Some of the words, Brian, were stolen from the US uh, White House-based television series The West Wing. Uh, and maybe this is a scriptwriter getting a little bit... Uh, excited or something, I don't know, but uh, the cough stolen from Hillary Clinton. You know, what more could go wrong for this woman? Well, it, it was it was a um, it was a disaster. But I think uh, my personal opinion, Mike, is the Tory party's got a major problem because um, Theresa May was the puppet. They thought she could step into Margaret Thatcher's blue rinse shoes. This was the lady who was going to captivate the uh, uh, conservative audience as it were but of course she's simply not up to it and the pressure is now beginning to tell so I can accept Theresa May was was unwell she got a bug of some description I think um, but uh, they're now in panic because of course she can't do the job uh, what are they going to do? Boris? Uh, well, God Boris, we'll come on to him. Um, so we might as well jump from uh, treason May onto the subject of child abuse in the Conservative Party. And of course, today, a very important day with that Wiltshire police report coming out. So this was just the day that the BBC and other um, news outlets decided to get in what we would describe as a preemptive attack on uh, Mike Veal and that Wiltshire police report. So we'll star the BBC because they have been most disgusting in how they have consistently attacked this investigation. Here's the news headline from earlier this morning's Edward Heath abuse report to be published. And if you look at this article and encourage you to read it so that you can see for yourselves the vicious BBC spin. Let's have a look at the people the BBC uses to do the dirty work. So we've got Lincoln Seligman, um, Grand, um, uh, Ted, Ted Heath was his godfather, uh, so godson of T Ted Heath. Uh, he said, amongst other things, a proper investigation should have taken place. This is before he saw the report. This, of course, is uh, before anyone had seen the report. A proper investigation should have taken place. Uh, we've got Lord Armstrong of Ilminster. Never a whiff of sexuality about Ted Heath. Never a whiff of sexuality. Uh, we've got a psychologist that was actually unnamed by the paper. We think they're referring to Richard, also known as Rachel Hoskins. Uh, and that psych psychologist or investigator said the investigation was based on the allegations of a handful of fantasists. And uh, we also, interestingly, had former Scotland Yard detective Clive Driscoll, who said that Heath was innocent. So this was a massive hit piece to try and destabilise the report. And uh, if we take a little bit of time to work through this, I think it's worth discussing what was what was actually going on here so let's bring in the first one um here he is this is um, mr seligman and he gets a star role on a video interview by victoria derbyshire and of course she is one of the bbc's um prime people for uh cutting the ground out of of, of any attempted exposure of um the the abuse of children. Uh, she came to prominence, if I remember, Brian, because she did the interview with the father of the Hampstead children. Is that right? Absolutely correct. So um, the BBC, as far as the Hampstead case went, you remember the vile abuse and the great detail that those children put across. Um, Victoria Derbyshire interviewed the father. She didn't interview anybody else. She didn't look at the evidence. She didn't look at the reports. She certainly didn't bring it up on BBC news. Uh, she was just there in order to support one side of the case and uh, help to try and debunk the, um, the reality that another two children were abused. Well, this itself was a, was a massive piece, encouraged people to look at the video. Um, 
So according to Mr Seligman, Ted Heath uh, wasn't interested in us as children. What he's talking about, they were the godchildren. Uh, they said that Heath wasn't interested in us as children. He only got interested in us when we were old enough to say amusing things. He was just, he was just sort of friends of our parents and um, he wasn't at all interested in children. The BBC main report also attributed this man as saying, if you make a mass appeal for victims, you're sure to get them whether they're legitimate or not. Now, I find that a bit of a oxymoron statement, I think, because he's saying if you make a mass appeal, you're going to get victims, but some of them won't be legitimate. Yeah. Which is actually true. Yes. So, um, but this man said that Veal was wrong because, of course, Wiltshire police made an appeal for other um, uh, witnesses, other abuse victims to come forward. Here's the BBC trying to twist this as if the call for victims to come forward and identify themselves, that was something that the police were, that were doing that was wrong. So this is particularly vicious stuff. Uh, let's bring in this man. Um, so this is um, uh, the ex-cabinet minister, uh, sorry, ex-cabinet secretary, Lord Armstrong. BBC uses him as a witness uh, to say that this, um, this whole investigation was complete nonsense. Uh, but of course, this man had come under the spotlight several years ago by refusing to name uh, an MP who'd been accused of uh, child abuse. So he knows Ted Heath very well. He helped, it would appear, allegedly, cover up another child abuse investigation around Westminster. And then the BBC uses this man uh, as a um, upstanding friend of, uh, of uh, Heath in order to attack Mike Veal. This is, this is despicable stuff. I want to use the word obscene here because the BBC is so obviously trying to make sure that the investigation into the abuse of children at high level does not succeed. The same BBC, of course, that covered up all of the abuses uh, by Jimmy Savile. So we'll complete the picture because this uh, is one of the eminent criminologists that has been used um, by the BBC and others to undermine the Wiltshire police case. Now, this gentleman, who I believe has now become a lady, um, uh, if I'm wrong on this, I hope somebody will correct me on this, but I think that Richard has become Rachel. Uh, he is, she has been working with Wiltshire Police. And the strange thing is that working with Wiltshire Police, the whole thing has become a nonsense. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so we can see here with the mail, this was a report from some months ago. So Edward Heath accuser is a satanic sex fantasist police warned by own expert that ritual abuse claims are false. Now, this expert is a fascinating person uh, because um, they came to prominence with the body of a, a young African boy found in the River Thames. They investigated with the police based on their expertise of ritualistic ceremony in Africa. But they then went on to write books and then almost become a TV and BBC celebrity. So this is a very, very muddled uh, picture, uh, but it is focused on undermining the police. And then we better bring in the last of the four that we've mentioned. Um, Driscoll told BBC Newsnight that while conducting a 1998 inquiry into allegations of abuse in children's homes in Lambeth, South London, in the 1980s, he was passed a list of suspects' names, including politicians, that he wanted to investigate. He said after he'd shared his suspicions at a meeting, he was taken off the investigation. So um, we've got the bizarre situation that a Met police officer who had himself said that there were, were abuses of children going on in London, which included politicians, has now completely flipped and is saying, no, 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 Heath is innocent. But how would he know? I mean, we can pause there, Mike, because this is the reality of this. How do these people know before the investigation that Heath is innocent? And if Heath is, in, is innocent uh, and there's no evidence and there's no witnesses, why are they all panicking and needing to defend him? 
Uh, well, have a look at this, because here is the mail in that same article saying a staggering 3,057 alleged abusers, including 98 politicians, have already been reported to a national unit known as Operation Hydrant, including 360 dead people, but some of the most high profile and historic claims have proved baseless. So this is another twisted article, but look at the, uh, look at the figures there. So we've got Operation Hydrant being flooded by um, abuse survivors coming forward to talk about abuse and the cover up of abuse, but there's nothing to see, Mike. Yes. Nothing to see. So um, where do we go? Well, this is interesting because unusually the Guardian has switched to the other side. It appears at least. Edward Heath inquiry, MP attacks the chilling campaign against the police. And uh, this is uh, the man, Andrew Bridgen. And he said the unprecedented negative and constant barrage on Veal and his investigative team I find it quite chilling. Many will think it's an attempt to derail silence and discredit the investigation before the report has been delivered. And that to me seems absolutely ec uh, excellent uh, observation because that is exactly uh, what they are trying to do. He went on to say, having spoken to Chief Constable Veal, if anything, they've erred on the side of being fair to Edward Heath throughout. They've learned from previous investigations, and I believe the report will stand up to scrutiny. Well, as we come on to the report in a moment or two, I have to say I agree with that statement, absolutely. And so do I. So let's just remind people of a few things. The damning evidence against members of parliament, the BBC, will not investigate nor discuss. And this is the meat of it. The BBC's own footage that we have a conservative whip, Tim Fortescue, saying on camera, they came to us with problems, it could be small boys, and we fixed it so that they would do as we asked. This man is talking about blackmailing uh, conservative politicians in order to do the bidding of the conservative party. Um, Evidence in front of our eyes, but of course the BBC doesn't introduce Tim Fortescue into any of their articles, doesn't mention the footage, but it does claim that that footage has been passed to the uh, child, independent child investigation. Uh, just remind me, Brian, this was Edward Heath's uh, chief whip. Indeed, uh, yeah. So would Edward Heath have been one of the people that came to uh, Tim Fortescue with this, this problem, if necessary? Well, if we start to assemble pieces of, 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 uh, of the picture on the board, it's becoming quite remarkable that we have, uh, we have politician after politician, not just accused of abuse, but having been involved in abuse. Cyril Smith, take one example. We have um, a Tory whip saying it was going on in the party to camera. Um, but we've got all of these new sources, particularly the BBC, saying absolutely nothing to see. Mm. Uh, well, there's nothing to see, of course. And uh, let's remind ourselves that uh, David Scott, um, a couple of weeks ago, um, highlighted this daily record report. And the headline is, I was raped at the age of four by Scott's Tory MP, who was one of Margaret Thatcher's closest allies. So here we've got more um, uh, child abuse coming to the surface. And this is around a lady called Sa uh, Susie Henderson, who's certainly not backing down. And here we've got the male revealed the full horrifying, horrifying truth about Sir Nicholas Fairbairn, the other paedophile at Margaret Thatcher's side. So the mainstream media, I think they're, they're in a complete spin, Mike, because actually they have themselves printed evidence over the years which they're now trying to pretend they have never printed but what does their evidence show it shows that paedophiles have been working at the heart of british government mm -hmm. and certainly at the heart of the conservative party so let us bring in this man uh, john wedger the met policeman that we interviewed and he described in great detail how the Met Police, the establishment, MPs, 
local authorities and children's protection charities covered up the abuse of children and the deaths of children in London. And these on screen are all the people who have taken no action. So we better start with uh, British Prime Minister Theresa May. She was Home Secretary at the at the time that John Wedger was trying to get the truth out. Uh, she didn't provide any help whatsoever. Cressida Dick, um, now head of the Met Police, has given him no help whatsoever. And then we had the policing minister, Brandon Lewis, and the former policing minister, Mike Penning. Neither of those two MPs have helped this man at all. And of course, absolutely no reporting uh, by the BBC. So every direction we go, we see that the BBC will not go near the evidence uh, that we have paedophiles working at the heart of uh, Parliament. And uh, we would better stay on the subject of uh, Theresa May uh, because uh, Melanie Shaw, the very brave lady who blew the whistle on the abuse of children at Beechwood Children's Home in Nottingham, of course, still in prison. She spent virtually 14 months in solitary confinement. She was put there uh, with the help of Theresa May, uh, the then Home Secretary. Why is this lady still in prison? She's in prison because aside from the abuse of Beechwood ch uh, Children's Home in Nottingham, she knows that uh, basically MPs were also involved in that abuse circuit. And we're also going to say that despite the, some initial reports by the BBC, uh, there is no proper in-depth reporting by the BBC into the Melanie Shaw case. This is a cover-up. It is being supported by the BBC with its £3.74 billion budget. And the aim of the cover-up is to protect the child abuse heart of the British government. And of course, that spreads across all three parties this is not something which is simply focused at the British Conservative Party. Um, so Operation Conifer uh, finished at the end of August. Uh, the investigation into allegations of non-recent child abuse made against Sir Edward Heath. This is a summary closure report. Uh, it is the public version of the summary closure report. Uh, and uh, it's available for download from the Wiltshire Constabulary website if you want to go and have a look at it. Now, before we say a bit more about this, uh, let's just have uh, a brief look at what Mike Veal himself said about this this morning. I'm Mike Veal, Wiltshire Police Chief Constable. Today, Wiltshire Police have published its report into Operation Conifer, the investigation into allegations of non-recent child abuse against Sir Edward Heath. Wiltshire Police, on behalf of the National Police Chiefs Council, took on this investigation knowing that due to the public prominence of Sir Edward Heath, both during his life and after his death, there would be significant public interest, comment and intense scrutiny. I recognise that Operation Conifer had the potential to damage confidence in Wiltshire Police, a force that I am proud of and which has a commendable and strong reputation. This damage, I believe, would be due to the views held by some about investigating allegations concerning deceased individuals. Some may have challenges around the costs associated with complex investigations at a time of budget cuts, and perhaps some who may have intransigent opinions and will always defend the conduct and behaviour of others, whatever the veracity of the allegations. I would ask others to be mindful that when investigators received allegations of child sexual abuse, the investigation team did not know what it did not know. They did not know the circumstances, the veracity, the risks, the implications or the vulnerability factors. Until a proportionate, professional and objective investigation was conducted, it would be impossible to identify and safeguard children or other vulnerable adults who may be at risk today. The safeguarding and protection of vulnerable people will continue to be the primary reason for conducting this investigation, and my team has not deviated from this legal and professional responsibility. So hopefully that gives uh, people an impression of, of the man and you know, what he's attempted to do here. Uh, it's a 15-minute briefing that he gives on this. Uh, again, it's on the Wiltshire Constabulary website. I do suggest people go and watch it all. But just in brief then, uh, the Conifer, the Operation Conifer itself had four clear objectives as they describe it, to identify and safeguard children and vulnerable adults 
who may be at risk of abuse today to seek to establish the facts concerning allegations of child abuse made against Sir Edward Heath, uh, to identify and where possible bring justice uh, any living person who may have committed criminal offences related to child abuse or associated cover-up, and that's a key point as well, it's about cover-up as well, uh, to attempt to provide public confidence in the police response to the allegations that were made. Uh, and uh, so what did they uh, say at the end uh, of the day? They said at the end of the investigation, the available evidence and information gathered was considered and the following conclusions have been made. In the case of seven individual disclosures, if Sir Edward Heath had been alive today, it has been concluded that he would have been interviewed under caution in order to obtain his account in relation to the allegations made against him. No inference of guilt should be drawn by the decision to interview under caution. The account from Sir Edward Heath would have been as important as other evidence gathered as part of the wider investigation. Uh, then it goes on to say, none of the victim disclosures in this category relate to the time when he was serving Prime Minister. Uh, then there were a further 19 individual dis disclosures. And for those disclosures, it was co uh, concluded that there was undermining information available, uh, such that the threshold to interview under caution was not met. Then three further disclosures, the persons reporting uh, alleged abuse, subsequently concluded that they were genuinely mistaken in naming Heath. Uh, and then in the further 10 disclosures, the alleged abuse was reported by a third party. Uh, and in the case of another three, uh, the victim reported the alleged abuse anonymously. Uh, and in the case, uh, no, in that case, no conclusions could be drawn on that. So the report is balanced. It isn't drawing any conclusions about guilt or innocence. It isn't making any claims about guilt or innocence. They state that several times, uh, Brian, and uh, I don't see anything in this uh, that can be criticised by anyone. Uh, and it seems to me, however, there is enough evidence, enough, uh, the, the conclusions are, are such uh, that the inquiry, whatever it takes from this, should have something to actually get its teeth into if it chooses to do so. Now, they have said that they have received uh, some a notice from the inquiry under Section 21 of the Inquiries Act uh, to asking for a copy of this cl uh, closure report and also the inve senior investigating officer's closure reports. Those are two separate reports, uh, and they're going to hand those over to the child abuse inquiry by the end of October. Uh, and so we wait to see what they do with this information. Uh, well, this is one of the key questions, uh, Mike, because, of course, that... Um independent uh, child abuse investigation is so silent at the moment. We know that they are simply not interested in the Melanie Shaw case. Many people are saying they think it is itself a whitewash. Uh, but if we, if we stay on the case of Mike Veal, what is, what is he to do? What was he to do? The only route he's got for this is that inquiry because, of course, the Crown Prosecution Service said a few weeks ago, oh, my goodness, we, we can't touch anything that may come forward. So even the Crown Prosecution Service prejudged what may come out of the Wiltshire Police investigation by saying uh, they couldn't deal with any of the information. So what happens now, Mike Veal's done good work. It goes to that independent inquiry and is then buried. That's a possibility, I think. Uh, well, look, uh, we have to say that the, the situation has taken a pretty big step forward because the report has come out. It's, it's gained a reaction from certain people, which has been publicised uh, yeah. absolutely by the mainstream media, as you've highlighted. Uh, and so uh, that information is now into the public inquiry and it's up to everybody to make sure that that is used in a useful way. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if 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 they're allowed to, to get away with the cover up, then then who's responsible for that? Well, it's it's us. It's the public. Indeed. And I will just um, end really this segment by saying that allegedly it's uh, corroborating evidence which gives the power to that Mike Veal report. Uh, that's all I can say. And don't forget, of course, that the version released to the public is heavily sanitised, whereas the ch in independent child abuse investigation gets the full report. So there's definitely more to it. And I think the panic, the sheer panic in the mainstream media, the sheer panic in the BBC to try and derail this says that there is something worth investigating. Mm. 
And of course, if there are other child abuse survivors out there listening to mainstream reports or alternative media such as the UK column, we would encourage those people to come forward because unless you testify, uh, how do we begin to dismantle this uh, child abuse empire in Westminster? And I'll also add that uh, it would be wonderful if people were to contact Mike Veal, email or letter, whatever you want to do, to thank that man for having the courage to stand up and do his job against the phenomenal attacks from the mainstream media, members of the House of Lords, politicians and uh, other people, the great and the good, who were determined to undermine this man's work. He needs praise. OK, uh, Thursday night and uh, Ian Crane is back in the studio, uh, 7.30 for Humanity versus Insanity. Uh, Pippa King will be his guest. Uh, and nine o'clock for fracking nightmare. Uh, no doubt he will be talking about the ban on fracking from Scotland, as well as what's been going on at uh, Kirby Misperton and his uh, his own recent arrest. Uh, and uh, a reminder that uh, From Stop War, uh, the media on trial event is taking place on the 19th of October in Bloomsbury Central Baptist Church. Uh, get along to that, details on Eventbrite. Uh, and also this Sunday, uh, you and Patrick Henningsen driving up from Plymouth to London for Alternative View 8.1, Brian? Yes, I think it's going to be extremely interesting and uh, all credit to Ian Crane because it's timing really good after the announcements today because as, as we have been saying for a very long time, to understand British politics, you need to understand the blackmail. How is that blackmail being done? through child abuse. So that's in the Connaught Rooms in London uh, on Sunday, begins at 11 a.m. Do get along to that as well. Okay, let's move on to Catalonia then, Catalonia. Um, so they're moving apparently to uh, declare independence from Spain on Monday. Uh, the Catalan president says he favors mediation, uh, but they're gonna move ahead uh, with this. this the the uh, Spanish are saying, well, there can't be any discussion remediation until Catalonia returns to the path of law, as they say. Uh, and uh, the Catalonian, uh, the people sort of in charge of the Catalonian government saying, well, we know that there may be uh, disbarments, uh, arrests, but we're prepared. Uh, and in no case will it be stopped. That's independence. Well, uh, will it be stopped or will it not? If the Express article here has anything, uh, is giving us a clue as to what's going on. Uh, it certainly looks like it could become significantly more chaotic because the headline here is that Tony Blair could step into the Catalonia crisis. He's been tipped as a mediator for Spain. Some people saying this is a ridiculous thing. After all, he was a mediator in the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict for a couple of years. It didn't do much good. Uh, so, uh, well... <laughs> what is he there to do if he, he ends up he... in that position? He's there to create more chaos. Uh, he's a bit like something unpleasant on your shoe, very difficult to shake off from the uh, political arena, I think. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, if we look at Syria, uh, this is from the American Conservative. I wanted to highlight it. Our enemies are winning Syria's future. Uh, the American Conservative getting very upset. That bas uh, a further acknowledgement, really, that, uh, that uh, the war in Syria is lost as far as the West is concerned. But what they're saying is, well, the war's lost. You know, the Syrian a coalition of the Syrian government, Iranian government, Lebanese and Russian forces are controlling 80% uh, of the country. I now understand that ISIS uh, only maintains control over 10% of the country. So they're on their way out for sure. Uh, but this article then goes on to say, well, maybe maybe reconstruction could be used as the uh, as the, the stick that is used to beat Assad over the head. Uh, and they quote uh, Boris Johnson, who said a couple of weeks ago, we believe that the only way forward is to get the political process going and to make it clear to the Iranians, Russians and the Assad regime that we, like the like-minded group, will not support the reconstruction of Syria until there's such a political process. And that means, resolution, as Resolution 2254 says, uh, a transition away from Assad. So they're now trying to threaten uh, reconstruction of the country unless Assad moves but, aside. And, but it, it doesn't demonstrate, Brian, the complete irrationality of the minds of these people because who has Assad got on his side? He's got Russia and China and Iran 
all three countries quite capable of getting together and rebuilding that rebuilding Syria. They don't need the West. Why would Assad do anything other than stick his middle finger up at a statement like that? Well, it, it is incredible, the arrogance of uh, Boris and, and his friends. And of course, we were talking about some of those friends yesterday. Um, huge um, um, uh, banking interests based in Dubai, who would like, I'm sure, to get fingers in pies with redevelopment anywhere. But isn't the usual routine that the, the wars are started by uh, the government in Westminster and the U.S.? And then once the destruction's done, in come all of these globalist corporations to make profit out of the reconstruction. Oh dear, in Syria, uh, not only has the pol political um, uh, change of getting rid of uh, um, Assad. Assad, thank you, that hasn't happened, but of course we now can't feed off the regeneration. So, so I think there's some great sadness there and it's almost like a schoolboy skulking in the corner, sulking in the corner, and saying, well, I, I'd like a bit of the pie as well, please. Mm. Um, well, let's have a look at the real Conservative Party. This man has been coming into the spotlight more and more as Theresa May comes under pressure, Jacob Rees-Mogg. And uh, thank you very much to the people who said, you need to pay attention to this man speaking at the Bruges Group. Uh, and he was talking about uh, the best Brexit uh, I have to say, this man makes my skin crawl by his, his style, uh, the slick suit, the uh, polished Oxford voice. He is part of the establishment. And what he had to say was truly appalling. Um, he said, uh, on the subject of Brexit, we've got to be generous, tough and conservative. They were the three subheadlines for his talk. Mrs May is absolutely right. We must do nothing to undermine the security of Europe. This is right into the heart of the EU military unification that uh, David Ellis has been warning about. Here he's echoing that. We must do nothing to undermine the security of Europe. And that guarantee remains for the police and military. So whatever Europe needs, Britain is going to be putting their police and British military into the European needs. We've got to be generous to the three million EU citizens who live here. And we're leaving... Um, not because he said, not because we don't like French cheese, but because we don't like being told what to do, uh, except we're not leaving. And of course, he knows it. Absolutely. Uh, we should be really pleased that people want to come to our meeting and engage with their ideas. It's a glorious thing about our nation. We're a free country and we're not afraid of people holding other views to our own because we think we can win the battle of ideas. Isn't this the same Conservative Party that is absolutely attacking free speech over the internet, Mike? It is. Isn't this the Conservative Party that removed information from their own website so that people can pick them up on which election promises they failed to meet? I think it is, yeah. Yeah, so sheer hypocrisy put over in this, um, this very polished, um, superior style. I found this man utterly appalling and uh, apologies for the formatting here it's difficult to get all of his wise words in uh, <laughs> he was talking about being conservative uh, they want to brexit in our image uh, he's talking about the conservative we want to brexit in our image which encapsulates our conservative values uh, we believe in democracy we believe the random decisions made by people across the country are better than decisions made by bureaucrats for them. We believe in a society that's built from the bottom up with people making choices for themselves, decisions in their lives. And you should be able to decide what you want. You can have as much chlorinated chicken as you like. I think, I think this man is sneering yeah. at uh, ordinary people in this country. He's mocking them. Uh, we want a bottom-up society built by the individuals who send representatives to Parliament and those representatives report back. Either this man is in complete dreamland or he is a vicious, uh, duplicitous politician who knows perfectly well that what is being built by the Conservatives is a dictatorship. It's nothing to do with democracy. Um, and then he said this. I agree with everything that Boris Johnson has been saying. He's speaking out about government policy with panache, verve and vigour, and this is wonderful. 
Good stuff. He, he agrees with everything Boris has been saying. And of course, yesterday we exposed that Boris Johnson at a fringe group meeting is uh, promoting business people who want to uh, change part of Libya into a new Dubai. Who were some of those business people? Well, it appears that they were the Legatum group who just happened to have put on that fringe group meeting in the first place and happened to be based in Dubai and happened to be uh, part of the Dubai um, Regeneration Association. I can't remember the exact name. So this is vast money, billions and billions of pounds. And uh, Boris Johnson is clearly just the puppet for these people. It, it's truly sickening, Mike. And let's remember the statement that uh, um, the Conservatives want to make sure that uh, uh, we've got uh, free, free, speech. free speech. Yeah, Yeah. well, for, I mean, this is this has taken place in America. This is Russia Today who, who have said that they have been, uh, YouTube has, has kicked them off from receiving their ad revenue in the United States. Uh, they make the point, of course, that they've had 5 billion views uh, on their uh, YouTube channel to date, but uh, YouTube has uh, kicked them off, and apparently this is a decision by the Alphabet uh, Group. Uh, and uh, they say that RT has been Google's premium partner since 2010 and accredited, accredited to use an official status of the most watched TV news network on YouTube. The fact that RT is no longer included in Google preferred advertising list in the US in itself does not affect RT's distribution and monetization uh, on the uh, on the platform, yet it is absolutely unacceptable that while there were no notifications of any policy changes set to RT, such internal info appears to have been leaked to the US media by Google. Uh, and so they've been, they've been removed from this, but remember that it's Theresa May that has started this whole process because it was she began uh, the process by pulling Google uh, and Facebook and Twitter into number 10 to tell them how disgusted she was with the fact that uh, there's too much free speech on the internet and too many people saying things that are critical of her policy agenda uh, and really it has to be stopped. Uh, I also remember of course that David Cameron was um, figuratively speaking in bed with Google in as much as he was um, um, uh, in close um, uh, proximity and communication to the European president of Google who's uh, Never think, skips you at the moment. Yeah, it does, yeah. but um, just Google it, you'll find it. Careful, so. careful, get into trouble for saying things like that. Uh, okay, let's uh, move on to Europol then and back on to uh, child sexual exploitation. Uh, the, Europol has decided that child sexual exploitation online is a crime priority because, uh, uh, and in, you know, frankly, Brian, if I saw any real evidence that Europol or police were doing anything about this, I would I would be less cynical about it, but this looks to me like uh, another attack on the internet uh, because they've no intention of either of actually dealing with the problem. Uh, this should be a top priority. Uh, I don't believe it is in reality. Uh, they're saying that coercion and sexual extortion are increasingly being used to victimise children. Offenders use these methods to obtain further child abuse material for financial gain or to get f physical access to victims. Uh, they talk about peer-to-peer -peer networking. Uh, remaining a key platform for sharing and distribution of child sexual exploitation material. Uh, they're saying that online offender communities operating from within the dark net uh, remain a primary concern, providing an environment for offenders to legitimize their behavior and so on. Uh, and so they make some recommendations. They say that EU membership, uh, member states sh should ensure that any investigative tool or measure used for combating serious or organized crime is also made available and used to full effect in investigating online child sexual exploitation. And my first question would be, why is it not already? Why is that not already the case? Because child sexual exploitation is not a priority for European governments. Uh, it should be. Uh, crime recording and analysis systems in the member states should be upgraded to better reflect and capture the different types of sexual crime being reported. Uh, and the member, member states should strongly consider cooperating through Europol with agencies and bodies, including the European Financial Coalition and other regional financial coalitions to tackle the abuse of, legit of legitimate payment systems, enabling child sexual abuse and exploitation, and so on. Uh, this really does need to be ser taken seriously, uh, but I, I question the motives for, for them presenting it in the way that they are. 
Yeah, I, I think it's just to give the appearance that something's being done when it isn't really. Um, now, one of the things that uh, Theresa May uh, has announced uh, is plans for an independent review of mental health legislation. Uh, she wants to tackle the issue of mental health detention. Uh, there have been concerns raised, apparently, about uh, the mental use of the Mental Health Act, uh, which was passed more than 30 years ago. Uh, the detention rates are too high and that the number of detentions has been rising year on year. Uh, and they're particularly concerned that uh, these detentions are applying to uh, certain uh, minority groups, particularly black and, ethnic, black and minority ethnic populations, uh, disproportionately affected. Uh, so they've put uh, Professor Sir Simon Weasley uh, in charge, who's uh, former president of the Royal College of Psychiatrists, and he's going to seek to address concerns. And you see, again, if this was genuine, uh, this would be an investigation into what's going on. And then they come along with a statement like that he is going to address concerns. So he's not, it's not an independent investigation, it's not an objective investigation, it's an investigation which will look at the concerns that people have about this and address them, cover them up, uh, brush them under the carpet. Lessons to be learnt and yes, then we've addressed those uh, lessons to be learnt and then they move on and everything stays the same. Yes. That's how it's done. Well, we've mentioned Rhys Mogg. Uh, you might have thought that I was being particularly hard on that gentleman. I don't think I was. Uh, either he's totally out of touch with the country or he's sneering at the general public in the United Kingdom. The harsh reality of the Conservative Britain hit the UK column offices uh, just an hour before we were due to um, come live on air. And what is the subject? Individuals running from Britain's psychiatric gulag. Uh, so we had this lady and gentleman turning up on our doorstep uh, we know quite a lot about their history and what they have been through, uh, literally on the run from police and psychiatric institutions in this in this country. And what is the cause of all this for, for the lady in the picture? Uh, some years ago, she reported that her daughter was being groomed and uh, that resulted in her being hounded and accused by social services, branded as mentally ill. Uh, put in, I think it's been a total of four psychiatric institutions, the worst of which in London, she was consistently abused in that psychiatric unit, including being heavily punched in the face by a so-called male carer. And at the moment, uh, they have nowhere to live, nowhere to go. Their possessions are in the car parked uh, on our forecourt. And this is the reality of uh, Theresa May's Conservative Britain. So whatever we're hearing from the Conservatives at the moment, uh, there is no focus on genuine uh, morality and care for the individual. Boris Johnson has spelt it out. Their dreams are on ever greater riches and power through the building of a new Dubai. So uh, I can't get over to you exactly how we feel here in the UK column today, uh, but to see the tragedy uh, that's unfolded around those two highly vulnerable individuals and to see the fact that actually there is no help available uh, for people in need in this country and there's certainly no help for people who step forward to report child grooming and child abuse uh, because as um, those individuals have experienced and, and we as members of the UK column team have experienced, uh, when you try and speak certainly to Devon and Cornwall police on this issue, uh, the reaction was to be shouted at. Like, thrown you, out, Brian. Uh, shouted at and thrown out of the police station for daring to report that a three-month-old baby boy uh, was suffering abuse at the hands of South Wales Social Services. So there we are. Uh, we have Rhys Mogg. Many tip him as a possible replacement for Theresa May. We have Boris Johnson. Uh, these people are despicable. And today, the 5th of October, we have that damning report from Wiltshire Police showing the rot at the heart of the British political establishment. And that rot centres around the abuse of children and a cover up of that abuse by the British state. Thank you for joining us. We will be back at the same time tomorrow, uh, joined by David Scott with Northern Exposure. Bye-bye.